Hello, everyone, and welcome to today's webinar. We are going to be looking at some digital strategies to help support your area businesses. My name is Elisa Sklar. I am the VP of Marketing at GIS Planning, and I'm delighted to be here with Mark Hayes, Director of Business Development from Size Up. Hello, Mark. Hello. It's good to talk with you again, and hello to everybody. Good morning, or good afternoon, I guess, for half the country. <laughs> it depends where you are, exactly. <laughs> And I also want to just give a shout out to all of our friends who have been impacted by the severe weather conditions, particularly in South Central US and Texas. But really, I, Mark and I were just talking about how this has just hit so many people. And I recognize that there are many who have signed up today who might not be able to join us because they don't have power or they don't have Wi-Fi or they need to focus on staying warm. And so our thoughts definitely are with them as they're struggling with all this. In this incredibly challenging year we've already had, it just feels like uh, just too much to bear. And so we are uh, aware of that. And it, it actually is, I think, part of the conversation that we're having here today about how to support your area businesses and the importance of being able to do that. There's just been clearly a series of crazy challenges um, with the pandemic in particular. And our small and medium sized businesses in all of our regions are just really, really struggling. Uh, I know many of us have already seen closures of places that have been near and dear to us. And we're very aware that our area businesses are the lifeblood of our area economy. Uh, we want to protect jobs. We want to protect access to all of these things. And it is absolutely critical that, that we be able to do that. And so what Mark and I really wanted to share with you here today, I've got a little overview, are some digital strategies that you can use to highlight your area businesses, to connect consumers and businesses, to help uh, connect, to assist them with data, with market intelligence. Uh, we wanna connect the, the consumers in the area. Um, so that's what we're gonna be taking a look at here today. And then we're gonna have a little bit of time at the end for questions. So with that, I'm gonna start off just by showing um, a few things that uh, we at GIS Planning and our, our clients have found very, very useful. Sometimes it's a matter of reimagining data you've already got, and sometimes it's thinking creatively about offering things in new ways. So one of the most exciting things that we've been happy to offer are, is our Zoom tour, which is a cloud-based virtual tour design software. Essentially, this is where you add all of your own content. It's drag and drop, super easy to use, very intuitive. You don't need any kind of training. And once you have Zoom, Zoom tour, you can build as many themed tours as you want in order to showcase things in your region. And in terms of helping business, there's many different ways you can do this. Right now, we are on an example from Nisa. So that is in South Carolina. And what this does is literally takes you on a tour, just like a real physical tour, through different places on the map that you might want to show. Um, you can use uh, all kinds of immersive uh, tools, map tools. We've got uh, data that can be built in here as well. You can add images, you can add video, you can add audio files, you can put links in. And so this is a way to promote a region. Now, this is really, useful obviously for economic development but we're seeing some really creative tours being produced by clients to showcase all kinds of different things that are related to business so i'll give you an example over here this is uh from british columbia and they're actually promoting here film locations they're trying to attract film production but i love this one because it also functions as an example of how you might offer a walk down your main street or a tour of your area businesses so while they're promoting uh, business locations here, what you can see is that each one of these is a different shop or place on their main street that you can walk down. We've got uh, links, we've got images, we've got video. You can show people what they're seeing in each place. So you can literally take people down your street and let them connect. We also have the ability to add links to their website uh, if you want and uh, all sorts of ways to kind of promote your town, your area, what it is that you guys have to offer. Another way that this is used to support local businesses, this is from Yuma, Arizona, is they've created a tour of an industry sector that's important to them, their food processing sector. So they have a description over here. And literally, they're now just walking us through 
the uh, tour of different companies in that industry sector. We can go over to their website if we want to learn more about it. We get data about the area and we can see all of the different businesses in this particular place that gives them uh, you know, contributes to this particular sector. It's useful for supply chain, it's useful for developing synergies, but it's also useful for people to kind of get a really solid understanding of what's happening um, in terms of that interactive, uh, an interactive tour of that particular sector. So that's Zoom tour, and there's so many creative ways to do this. You could do, you know, the top 10 places to eat around your conference center. You could look at restaurants, you could look at bars, you could look at retail. Um, anything that you can do to help promote businesses. And the way Zoom tour works is you can create as many tours as you want. Each one can have their own theme. Within the tours, each one can have as many stops as you want. So uh, it really is a way to take people on a tour when they can't physically come to your location. Now, another strategy that has been incredibly popular is a tool that we uh, launched about a, a month into the pandemic. We offer this free to all of our existing GIS planning clients, but it's uh, just like Zoom Tour, extremely affordable. Anyone can, who even if you're not a client, could, could connect with something like this. And this is basically a map that allows you to connect your area residents with the businesses in your area. And this is from Fayette County, Georgia. I think we have uh, nearly 100 of them that have been implemented since we launched this in April. And businesses are allowed to add themselves, which is fantastic because it makes things much easier for your chamber or your economic development organization, they just click on add a business, they fill out the form, it goes to uh, you folks for approval, that way you can just control what goes in there, the businesses can also edit these things. And if you want, as a consumer, let's say you're looking to find a restaurant in your area, you can click on that and filter through there and it will show you all of that information. Now the businesses themselves can um, add any detail that they want, so that makes things kind of really easy for them. You can go in, just like a property report, there is the business report now here, and they can add different kinds of images or video if they want. They can put information about themselves, details, uh, there can be a link to their website from here. Um, they can add if there's a gift card program or curbside delivery, contactless payment, anything like that that's related to it. So this is something that we've found to be particularly useful during a time when your area residents might want to support your local businesses instead of, you know, certain unnamed international cloud-based suppliers where the money goes in and does not benefit your community at all. I, maybe I'd rather, as a, a resident, I'd rather spend the money at my local hardware store or, uh, or restaurant, um, you know, something that's locally owned to be able to go in there. So that's really quite useful. You can also add health facilities. So if people want to find that, that's, that's easy to do. One of the things I love about Fayette is that they they partnered with their area newspaper in order to promote this. This is important because the newspaper obviously requires the, they're relying on these businesses to be open. That's where their ad revenue comes from. So they're certainly interested in making sure that businesses stay healthy um, and they use this co-promotion with the newspaper to promote the link so that area residents can find it, but also so that businesses know and can add themselves. And that's proven to be really successful. We have these all over Canada and US, uh, really a, kind of a nice additional thing to promote and easy to get up and running, literally a matter of a day or so to get that up and running. Now the next thing that I would suggest is to think about how the data you are already offering can help benefit your local businesses. So in this case, this is a client of ours, the Choctaw Nation. I, I just love the way that they've done this. They're using, just like many economic development organizations, they promote certain key industries. And if you click on any one of those pages, you'll see that they've got one of our intelligence components that promotes that. And we showed them how you could customize using the NAICS code so that when you load on this one, this is a, a sector, I guess they're calling it materials processing and remanufacturing, that several NAICS code, we showed them how to do it it's super easy and this is basically telling the story of those businesses each one of these dots represents a business that you can check on and and take a look at so for the businesses it's a really nice way to promote them it's fantastic for analysis so they can be looking at suppliers at competitors they can zoom in and learn more about you know anything particularly in their region to help them understand more about it so in terms of offering a snapshot of the different kinds of businesses 
the intelligence component was always able to do this, but we're now able to set it up so that it can load to show off any of the industries that are really important for you, and that, that's really quite useful. Now let's go take a look at another way you can use this data to support your business. This is from Pasadena uh, EVC in Texas. And our business report over here, as you can see, we've gone into the community data. We selected the entire area for Pasadena. And similar to the intelligence component, this allows us to map out all of the businesses in the area. Now you can zoom in, that's a lot of dots and it's really hard to kind of make sense of any one of those things. So what we could do is we could turn all those off and we can create a specialized report as I did here. So I turned everything off and I said, okay, I'm really just interested in looking at professional, scientific and technical services. And that opens all of those up. But maybe that's even too much. Perhaps I just wanna look, well, it's coming up to be tax time, not so long from now. I could just click on that and I'd be able to then see all of the um, services that are related to that specific area. And if I wanna drill down further, I can click on that one and it's gonna show me the names of the different businesses and exactly where they're located in the area. So again, in terms of being able to show off the bit, help the businesses map themselves, help them understand what's going on, help them see how they fit in a little bit, they can um, you know, look out for competitors, they can help determine across the geography of this area where different things are located. They can use this information for themselves if they wanna also look for suppliers or other kind of of synergies you know, with other businesses that they perhaps wanna be located near. And then it's super easy to share this information. So it can be shared as a PDF, you can print these things out, you can also share it as a link. And because I've done all sorts of things here, if I wanted to add in, let's say map layers, if it was important for me to know different things, I could add those in. And the share link will bring people back to the specific report I've created at the Zoom level I've created. And of course you can share these things on social media. So as we're looking to support businesses in our area, you could generate a map of all of the tax preparation um, services in your area and share that directly onto LinkedIn or onto Facebook as a way to promote that. The nice thing is it brings people back to your website so that they can continue doing analysis, but it's a great way to both promote the businesses but also to give them intelligence about what's happening in their area that they can use to make decisions. All right, Mark, I'm gonna turn this over to you and I'm gonna make you the presenter here so you can show us what's on your screen and uh, you can tell us a little bit about what you can offer our area businesses. Yeah, fantastic. Thank you, Elisa, for that. I always enjoy, though I've seen a lot of what GIS planning does over the years, uh, you guys are always adding new stuff and making changes and making huge improvements. Um, so even though I haven't seen what you guys do in a year, there's so much new that you guys are always producing. Um, and I, I think that's very impressive. There is definitely nobody else out there just doing that much, that much growth and that much new things that can help economic development organizations serve their communities, which is ultimately what we're all here to do. Um, here on our side uh, with Size Up, if you don't know anything about us, we have always just kind of targeted small businesses in, help, uh, or in our help. So what we do is we help economic development organizations help small businesses through software. Uh, we understand that traditional BRNE programs, uh, you are told to target, you know, the top 20, the top 50, the top 100 would be giant employers in your area and help them grow. Help them go from, you know, the amount of employees they have to another 10, another 20, or, you know, in the last year, just help them not go to zero. Uh, BRNE programs are very important. And I usually see basically three different kinds. Either the first kind is we don't have a BRNE program. Um, so that's one that definitely probably you're not in this webinar. Um, others have been searching for BRNE programs because attractions not been as popular as it once was in the last year. Obviously not a lot, as many businesses thinking of expanding as there used to be. Um, so you're looking for solutions. And I assume that is why you're here is you're finding digital solutions to help the businesses already in your community. And you see that everything, you know, some of the stuff GIS plan does, how it can help existing businesses, especially through your BRNE programs. Um, but I want to show size up how it can help even beyond that, somebody as small as zero, uh, just the startups in your community, the business that's just thinking about starting out of this pandemic. How can you help that business as an economic development organization? Uh, it's pretty much impossible to help that business person by person by person because of um, 
many factors, quite frankly, but the main one being being an expert in every different industry is impossible. The second one, you know, being kind of unique to this year is getting together and helping someone personally isn't as easy as it once was, depending on where you live. So you need digital solutions and SizeUp's a fantastic digital solution for that. Um, when you're using a small business tool, um, it needs to be something that's easy for somebody who has no background in this. Uh, this has to be a tool that is simpler than simple to use because most people are not economic developers. They don't use tools every day. They don't use research. They don't use data. They don't know what they're doing in this space. So a tool has to be very simple. And just to be very frank, they pretty much don't exist. Uh, I show size up because it's really one of the unique solutions to helping small businesses. And that's what we all have to be doing right now is helping small businesses, um, not just because we're in a pandemic, though that's important, because that's where the future of jobs is coming from. The most jobs are already, uh, they're already created by small businesses. Going forward, it's only going to get larger from there. All of the data suggests, and if we had more time, I could show you the data. Um, all of the data suggests that entrepreneurship is growing and it's growing very fast. And all the pandemic did was expedite that process. We have seen more throughout the country, uh, the United States anyway, we have seen more business applications in the last 12 months than ever before. Um, it's people are looking to start businesses and that's going to be a huge trend going forward. So you have to be able to help people from day zero, not just from when they have 10 employees or when they have 20, 20 employees, but from day zero, you have to be able to help them. And the last bit of percentages I'll give on why is just a lot of people may not know this. I've only found out fairly recently through different studies, but 20% of businesses fail in year one, and that is not in a pandemic. That is just a normal year, year one, 20% of businesses fail. By the end of year five, 50% of businesses fail. So if you looked at the math there, you'd show like, okay, your odds of failing in that first year are obviously way greater um, than they are in years after that. And then your chances of surviving get better after year one than year two, year three, year four, year five. Well, almost 13% of the reason why businesses fail in that first year and going forward is lack of preparation, lack of information. Well, SizeUp can bring them that information. So all a business would have to do is go to your economic development website. The tool is embedded directly onto the website. The tool needs to be there 24 seven. It needs to have no barriers to entry. Just simply get on a web page, use the tool, describe what it is you do. So it doesn't matter what industry you're in. You don't have to know any NAICS codes. You just need to be able to describe what it is you're doing. And just to point out, we're getting very specific here. If I'm a restaurant, I don't just say I'm a restaurant. I say specifically what kind of restaurant I am because we're going to compare apples to apples here. We're going to make sure that you know exactly who you're competing with, that you know where your customers are. And we'll just use the default examples here for a coffee shop in Colorado Springs, Colorado. The first thing you're going to be able to do is benchmark yourself versus others who do exactly what you do. So we're just going to run over a few parts of the tool, but this is so cool because you get to really just judge how could I do in this business? If we're thinking like I started with, with just the eyes of a startup, then I think I can make a million dollars a year in total revenue in Colorado Springs, Colorado as a coffee shop. Well, size is going to say, not so fast. You'd be one of the top performers in your industry. The average coffee shop's making $723,000 per year. So a startup would automatically know, like, let's not put ourselves behind the eight ball and get us into a lease that we can't afford and have expenses that we can't afford based off thinking we're going to make a million dollars a year in total revenue because the average is only making $750,000 per year. We can look at heat maps and say, okay, which areas of Colorado Springs are coffee shops performing the best? And what do those areas look like? How are, why are they performing differently than in the yellow areas that are performing the worst? So we can go over here into Samoran Hills and say, why are the coffee shops there doing so much better than in the neighboring zip code? And what do they look like? What do the neighborhoods look like? What do the stores themselves look like? Let's compare ourselves before deciding where we're gonna locate specifically within the city. We can see trending within our industry. Is this a growing industry? Is it a dying industry? Should I expect more competition in the future, less competition? Coffee shops on a national scale are definitely growing. They're not growing as fast as they once were, but they're certainly a growing industry. Can we compare that to the state of Colorado in this case and to the metro level? Is it following the same trend on a national scale? We have entrepreneurs use this tool to see what is trending nationally that's not yet trending locally. Guess what that's telling me? That's telling me it's more than likely, or it, it is not guaranteed obviously to succeed, but it is a decent chance I think this would succeed locally because it's taken off in the state of Colorado or it's taken off nationally. Locally, it's you've got reason to believe why it would follow the same pattern. You can 
make sure you're paying you know employee salaries this is usually the most you know, the largest expense for a small business owner what should i expect to pay on average in el paso county colorado as a coffee shop let's make sure we're paying expected wages for employees how many employees does it take to run this business any small business owner doesn't have a clue you don't have to guess you can see okay in colorado springs the average coffee shop has about 13 employees so if i was looking at this through the eyes of startup and you're just trying to help an entrepreneur here well they've over projected their revenue they've over projected how many employees they need and how much they're going to pay their employees um i would say go back to the drawing board i'm glad you didn't already get into something but you're just seeing how what you should expect out of this business uh, not to mention an existing business obviously can use this to see how do i compare with others who do exactly what i do where am i strong where am i weak there's other things that you can benchmark within this part of the tool get cost effectiveness you can get your expected revenue per capita compare where per person they're making more money as it compares to total revenues your expected local turnover rates even healthcare costs workers compensation costs at the end you get a great summary view of category where your business falls and then the exact percentile in which you fall in. So what you've got here is decades worth of market research that you've compiled into a report in just a couple minutes of your time. That's just one of the four tools that make up Size Up. The next one is the competition section of the tool. You know, it's important to know where your competitors are located, right? And I don't have to go point them out. I simply just look at a Google map that says, hey, these are all the coffee shops within the city all the coffee shops within the county, within the metro. So you can imagine no matter what size business you're looking at, what industry you're looking at, it's important to know where your competitors are located. And not only where they're located, but let's look at some consumer expenditure data on top of this. So where are people spending money on breakfast and brunch? And how does that compare to where other coffee shops are located at or where other diners are located at? So the areas in the darkest red are showing me where the highest amount of household consumer expenditure is. And the red dots are showing me where are my competitors? Can I find an area that's higher household consumer expenditure, but maybe not so many competitors? That would be an area that I might look at targeting for my new business or to expand my current business. So if you do business with the consumer, that's the information you need to know. If you do business with other businesses, just type any industry that you might be a, someone that sells to. So Elisa mentioned tax services. Those are people that are actually in their offices right now. So maybe I am supplying coffee because you know the community coffee pot's not as popular as it once was in a pandemic. So I'm gonna supply coffee to different tax preparation services. All I've had to do is type in whatever industry I wanna find my potential customers. And it's going to list to me who they are, where they are, what they do, what their name is, what their address is, what their website is. I can look these people up. I can find clusters of them where it might be more than likely I can you know, not go across town for one customer, but find little pockets where there's four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten 10 different customers. I can add more industries, law firms, accountants, whatever, and just find more and more pockets of potential customers and see how that compares to my red uh, competitors. Same thing with suppliers. Supply chain was a big deal last year. Uh, it was interrupted for a lot of industries. I can type in whatever industry. I'm looking for wholesale coffee and tea in the Colorado Springs area. Well, where are some potential suppliers of mine? I can almost guarantee you that, yeah, maybe the coffee shops know which ones are in Colorado Springs, but did they know there is this one over in Castle Rock, Colorado, that could be a potential supplier of theirs? And you could actually supply something that might be a little more unique here. So page after page of potential suppliers within the region advertising this is super relevant i am in middle tennessee and we have had a lot of ice and snow and it is crazy nobody understands what's going on in their lives i'm one of these people but my wife she actually works for a dentist and they aren't having patients come to the office because nobody knows how to drive in this myself being included so they've canceled you know patients coming to the office but i was listening to them having a conversation about hey let's try to think of some marketing stuff where can we market what can we market and literally nobody had any ideas like what to do right they're like oh we can market on social media but it was like well who do we market to where do we market well this part of the tool can help you do exactly that it's going to show you best places to advertise based off being a coffee shop or in the case of where i live i could be a dentist in my home location where would be best places to advertise based off total revenues or based off revenues per capita that's going to be a little more invisible data that per person they're spending a lot of money in this industry but total revenues obviously don't stack up because maybe we just have less people or most underserved markets. Let's compare higher consumer expenditures to lower total revenues. And these are the areas that, you know what? There's potential for you to make more money. That's where you should advertise. And I haven't had to do any analysis, any triangulating. I just simply clicked one button and SizeUps told me, 
target these areas to advertise. I can add more filters if I'm looking for millennials or, you know, if I'm a, wh whatever the case may be, a pediatric dentist, I want to know where people having households are with people in the childbearing age or certain household incomes. I'm simply just dragging bars here and the map updates and I'm narrowing it down near the Asian Pacific market would be a great underserved market for coffee shops with median ages between 18 and 40 and household incomes above 40,000. I dragged a few buttons and size ups pointing me to what to do. And then you can pull demographics as well. I won't go through them, but really specific demographic information telling you what your community's demographics are. You can get heat maps, finding block groups. If I'm looking for those millennials, again, let's find 20 to 29 year olds or 30 to 39 year olds. Well, these are the neighborhoods that have the densest population of that specific group. And I can go in and target exactly these areas. Okay, those are the neighborhoods I want to target for my advertising because there's more people that I'm going to do business with there. Draw your own boundaries, right? Let's just draw a polygon of whatever I want to here. And it's going to pull up the data that I'm looking for for consumer expenditure, labor force, or demographics, or around whatever address you want to. Type in an address one mile all the way out to 60 miles, one minute all the way out to 60 minute drive time. So the point being here, you do not have to be an expert at what you do. Everyone on this call, this is information that maybe you found ways to pull some of it from different places, um, but you don't have to be an expert here. All of it now lives on one place on your website 24 seven. So that person that's just in your community, that's like, I think I want to start a business. Guess what? They can use size up to figure out the best chance at that business succeeding. So if you're just that year one 20% fail rate, if we can cut that down to 15%, 10% in your town, how many jobs are you saving based off helping that business in that first year? And then the added benefit, this tool can help a business that's in its 20th year. So no matter what part of the life cycle of a business you're in, size up's gonna help. But I'll hold it to that. I could talk about it forever, um, but I definitely wanna be able to do Q and A. So Elisa, I'll throw it back to you. Thank you so much, Mark. I always love watching you when you when you uh, demo this. I, I definitely learn a lot. And I also have loved all the different things that you've done with Size Up. It's, uh, it's really wonderful to see the different options and the different visualizations that you guys have. It's really fantastic. So I am going to ask you guys if you have any questions. You are welcome to put those in the questions field in the GoToWebinar control panel on the right-hand side of your screen. Uh, let's see, I've got a question over here for you. Uh, do you find many EDOs working with startups? Mark, why don't you have a crack at that one? Yeah, uh, well, so it depends on when you asked me that question. Uh, in today's day and age, yes, absolutely. Um, there are EDOs across the country who have kind of caught on to this trend that really startups are kind of what are going to be creating the jobs going forward um it's where it's going to be the highest growth area quite frankly uh and then you have economic gardening being such a big deal right now well you don't apply for that until you're now at 10 employees 10 to 20 i think is their sweet spot so how do we get a business from zero to 10 um to be able to get to that high growth rate yeah. so i would say that five years ago really not many economic development organizations were thinking about helping startups um but Today, uh, it's a huge trend that I've noticed in the last year, uh, in the last probably six months specifically. Uh, and that's what, you know, our, our tool is not designed just to help the startup, but it can help, it, it was designed to help the existing business. And an added benefit is that we've now kind of also built into where it can help the startup as well. So uh, that was a really long way to answer your question that I was gonna say, yes, it is something that has grown quickly. Well, I, I agree with you. And one of the things that we've seen even among our clients who are usually focused more on foreign direct investment or investment attraction is that because of the pandemic, they had absolutely no choice but to also turn their attention to supporting the local businesses. Uh, that was clearly, in terms of triage, where the most pressing needs let, uh, uh, lay, but also to see collaborations between agencies that maybe focused on investment attraction um, and now working with their chambers, working with the elected officials, municipal governments. And I actually think that collaboration is fantastic. That benefits everybody in the long run. Um, and I also see that kind of setting up to, to assist businesses who are super busy, often working you know, around the clock and crazy hours in the best of times, but now doing everything they can to keep their businesses open. 
they may not be able to get in touch with you during your business hours. So if you have digital tools online where they can, you know, two in the morning on a Sunday, that's when they happen to be free, that you want to make sure that those tools exist on your website so that they can access them when they have a moment, not when it's convenient for us uh, in economic development to be there for them. So I think that that really is critical. The other thing I would just add to that is that your millennials and your, you know, the the ones who are kind of doing startups, they may not necessarily know anything about economic development. They may not even know you exist. But if you have online interactive tools out there that give them access to market intelligence, that help promote them, that's going to get their attention because that's something that they're easily able to find. So connecting with this next, gen next generation of entrepreneurs and business owners, I think, is absolutely critical. Mark, this actually brings us to the end of our half an hour. I don't know if there's anything else that you would like to add before we uh, sign off here for today. No, uh, there is plenty that I could say, and I could say it at about a thousand words a minute, I know, um, but still that would drag us on. Uh, no, I, I certainly, I, I believe that in this year, when, you, when you're watching economic development, when you're going to conferences at the end of the year, uh, you're certainly going to see a huge amount of talk about small business that otherwise usually didn't exist. You'd see two or three different sessions at a, you know IEDC about small business you're going to see so many more of them now. It's something that if you're not kind of going that direction, you really should be. And I'm not saying go towards what we do by any means. Obviously, I think it's the best solution digitally, uh, but certainly be looking that direction and be learning more. This is a good start. You join this, this webinar. So small business, they need us more than ever, and they're going to continue to need us, not just because it's a pandemic. So I appreciate uh, you putting this together, Elisa. Thanks for having me. It is always a pleasure to work with you, Mark. I always have fun with, with that. And I appreciate you taking the time here to join us. And for all of you who joined us as well, thank you for taking time out of your busy days. And thank you for the work you are doing for your communities. You will hear from us by tomorrow with a link to this video. Thank you very much. And we will be in touch. Have a great Thanks, day. Thanks, everybody. Bye. Bye.